Hey guys, Russ with Uncle Feather Merchants here. Today we're doing a crash course on spring dry fly fishing. This one's all about the flies. So in the springtime, right, uh, we're really seeing typically midges uh, continuing on through the winter months. Uh, they've increased in size from some of those really small ones. We were fishing maybe in January, February, um, and now we're into some of the larger size midges. And then alongside those midges, we're seeing blueing olives, right? And that's typically the main two dry fly hatches we're going to see. The other thing that's starting to come out, right, and I've seen a few crawling around here uh, are ants. So terrestrials are coming back in play a little bit. So we can have some, some prospecting flies that aren't just imitative flies as well. Um, and then the midge hatch, right, we've got a, a, a nice warm sunny day today. I would expect to see midges on a day like today. This is kind of textbook. Uh, you can see them in the morning, the evening hours, and the midday, right? Keep an eye out on the glassy stuff. Um, don't look in the choppy water, but those really nice long slicks that you're seeing, if you're seeing some, some surface breaks there, my first thought without even coming down in the river is going to be midges, right? Um, 18s are appropriate this time of year. You don't have to fish 24s with like no hook. Um, you can have something that, that you can hook and actually land fish on, which is great. Uh, it's a lot of fun this time of year. Uh, and the bluings are, you know, think cloudy gray days if it had a warm overnight and that carries over into a kind of a warm afternoon with good cloud cover that's like textbook i'd be really excited about bringing my blue wings down to the river and trying to find that and you'll find that during the warmest part of the day typically right so those banker hours kind of like 11 till 4 somewhere in that window i'd be really thinking about blue wing olives uh, and i'd be getting really excited about that stuff so so with that we're going to look at a couple flies um, that work well for the midges, blue wings, and some of my, my prospecting flies uh, if I'm having trouble figuring out exactly what they're eating. All of my flies I've got organized largely in, in one box here. And this is a box that I guess continue to refill throughout the season. This is my dry fly box. This is dad's money, in fact. Um, on one side of it, I've got all my mayflies here. And on the other side, I've kind of got caddis terrestrial um, floaty flies, chubbies and stuff like that. Uh, I really like Umqua's HD uh, foam box for this. It's light, and in the odd chance I fall in the river, uh, get a little wet. Um, all of these flies aren't already pre-soaked for me, which is a real disadvantage when you're fishing dry flies. Um, so I really like the waterproof box. Uh, I've got it organized from small flies to bigger flies, kind of I can progress down through the hatch depending on what's hatching. Um, I've got some, again, really representative flies, but then general patterns that I've got a lot of confidence in in a number of different sizes. One of those is Antonio's Adult uh, and a merger. The reason I really like this fly is that um, it's a CDC wing, and CDC is really great for delicate presentations, right? So when we're seeing those midges or blue wings uh, hatching out of that really slick flat water, having something that wants to parachute down and land softly uh, versus crash into the water is really critical. Uh, oftentimes you want to have something that crashes onto the water, but not with those really delicate um, slurps as they're doing, right? Uh, delicate sips. Um, so I really like this one, that CDC lands ultra soft on the water, right? So I get a quiet presentation. And then if you've ever watched uh, a blue wing olive flutter in the wind, uh, its big wings are like a sail and it'll catch the wind and it'll kind of flop side to side like this. That CDC will do the exact same thing. So it has a real rocking motion, uh, which is super um, lifelike. Uh, and I really think helps trigger the bites. And not only that, but when they sip down this CDC, it's not like hackle. Um, which is harder to break through uh, and get in their mouth, the CDC will collapse and you get, you get really good deep takes with this in parts of the trout's mouth that really convert that fish typically into a landed fish, right? Um, not to mention some barbless hook, which I always find to be convenient and easy. So I've got that one uh, really from 20 all the way up to 14 in my box represented here. Um, and I find it's an awesome crossover pattern, right? Sometimes you're seeing betas and midges at the same time, and you can cast that one out there and it'll confidently work for either or a lot of times, but definitely in the larger sizes, uh, you can start to really nail that betas. Um, 
One of the other ones I really like is a Comparadon, right, uh, which is an awesome betis pattern. When I'm really seeing those blue wings, and sometimes they're coming out of a little faster water, right, uh, a little more broken water. Um, that, that elk that's on there, right, uh, really holds up a lot better than the CDC, right, so I don't have to maintain the flies off, and I can fish it in some heavier, faster water, uh, which is a real advantage to be able to, to work through some of that. Um, in times where I'm seeing a lot of midges, Craig Matthews Zelon midge is one of my favorites. Uh, it's a no BS midge. It gets the job done. It rides low. I can see it, which is really important. And not only that, but the fish take it confidently. Um, and the last one, right, uh, sometimes you can get fish that are really not fully keyed in on the adults. They don't want to fully break the surface, but you're just seeing the tip come out, right, when you're, when you're seeing those kind of noses. Um, if you're not seeing their beaks really break open and, and gulp down, taking adults, but you're seeing them sip down through the water, pulling something underneath, um, I'll reach for um, Bob Quigley's film critic in that scenario, right? Uh, it rides really low in the water, um, and sometimes before they're really on the adults, they're really taking those emergence. We may see the adults floating by, but they're really on that emergent stage, that, that kind of like, I'm trying to break through the water surface. Um, that's a really great one and something I can see at distance. It's got this cool little flag at the top of it uh, that I guess has a little touch of black that you can see from a, from a long way off, especially on those awesome gray bluing olive days. Um, on the other side of the box here, I'm gonna pull out Umqua's Stubby Chubby, right? And this is the Stubby Chubby in an 18. And there's a lot of times where I'm fishing in, into flat water or I really wanna fish dry flies and it's not quite there yet, but it's, it's getting really close. Um, and this would be what I do in a prospecting scenario. Um, the same reason we use chubbies in tens, right, and eights. Um, they hold up nymphs extremely well. The difference is, right, if I'm gonna to start to fish thinner water where I expect uh, dry flies to really be hatching from and fish to be sitting there and be able to kind of hold a lie, and, and work some of those, I really don't want to throw an indicator in there and blow them up, right? Uh, indicator, split shot, double fly, you're making a lot of noise. I can have an extremely quiet entry onto the water with these stubby chubbies, you know, and have like a really impressionistic, you know, juju or some kind of midge underneath it um, and, and really work that, maybe with a little tungsten bead or not, right? And work that, that first, you know, foot of the water or two feet down. Um, so this is one that I definitely will put on. It's a low maintenance dry fly, which is awesome. Um, and you can fish through a ton of water with the little, you know, micro spring dry dropper rig, which is really cool. So that's some of the, my favorite flies that I like. Um, typically with any of these, right, I'm gonna make sure I've got more than a couple. Uh, we refer to what we've got here as kind of power rows, right? Um, your windows are small. If you end up cracking a few flies off and that's what was working, and you really wanna get them on dries, I'd have, I'd have enough there that you confidently can move through some of them, share one with a buddy uh, that's maybe struggling a little bit, but like having more than one or two in your box is gonna be a really big difference maker for when you can capitalize on that window, right? Some of those CDC hackles may get matted together. Rather than sitting there and working your CDC, I'll cut it off, let it dry on the outside of my waders here, plug on a fresh one and fish that one, right? Um, it just keeps you efficiently working through those little windows. So as you're getting ready to head out this spring, head into the shop. Uh, they're gonna be able to identify what's hatching where, um, give you a good idea of what those bugs are that you need to have in your box so you can be loaded up and make the most of your time this spring. Thanks for tuning in, good luck.